Hello friends, we're back with another Jet Engine tutorial about dynamic maps. We've seen your questions about using the map as a live filter and felt that this feature deserves a bit of attention. So in this video I'll show you how to connect your map with other listings, like grids or calendars, to make them display the post currently visible on the map as you zoom or pan around. And as always, if anything comes up, questions, ideas or just a hello, drop it in in the comments below. For this tutorial make sure you have Jet Engine installed and activated and that the map listing module is turned on in the Jet Engine dashboard. Since we'll be working with listing positions on the map, you'll also need to connect a map provider. And if you haven't set it up yet, check out one of the previous videos where we show how to do it for free. One more thing, if your address data is stored as the plain text in a meta field, don't forget to enable the preload coordinates by address toggle. For this demo, I'm using a set of custom posts for events. The event info is stored in several meta fields and the ones we'll be working with include a date type field for the event date, a media field with an image, a text area field for the description and a text field for the address. I've already prepared a few example posts and we'll be displaying them in three types of listings, a map, a calendar and a grid, for which I've also set up three basic listing templates. The listing for the map shows the post title and description using the dynamic field widget. The calendar listing shows just the event image using dynamic image. And the grid listing includes an image, title and description. Before we start building the page with all the listings, we need to create a custom query, which we will use to filter posts based on their location. To do that, go to Jet Engine Query Builder and click the Add New button. Give your query a name, Keep the default query type set to post and scroll down to the post query settings to select the events post type. Now open the geo search tab. Here you should select the point on the map that the query should use as the center, define the search radius by entering a distance value and units and choose the meta field where the post address is located. Once that's done, click add query to save it. Let's start building the page from scratch. I'll be using Elementor for this tutorial, but the same functionality can be achieved with the block editor or bricks. First, I'm going to insert a crucial widget for this setup. It's called Map Sync. This widget needs to be connected to the map we'll use for displaying and filtering posts. To do that, enter the value into the query ID field, which we'll also use as the map CSS ID. Besides the map listing, I also want to display the same post in a listing grid and a dynamic calendar on the same page synchronize with the map. So instead of coming back later to set those up, I'll go ahead and configure the additional providers now. To do this, enable the additional providers enable toggle and click the add item button. For the listing grid, choose Jet Engine additional provider and assign it a unique additional query ID. For the calendar, choose Jet Engine calendar provider and assign a different unique additional query ID. Next, let's add the map listing widget. In the general settings, select the listing you previously created for the map layout and specify the name of the field that holds the address. The post now should appear in the preview area with the default map design including markers and clustering. By default, the listing content will show when a marker is clicked, but I will change it to hover. I also want to use small images instead of default markers which will later help better visualize the synchronization between map and the other listings. If you want to make sure that only the items within the visible map area appear on the map, you'll need to enable GeoSearch custom query for the map listing. Also, don't forget to go to the widget's advanced tab and enter the same value you used for the sync maps query ID into the CSS ID field. Now let's add a listing grid widget underneath the map and connect it with the necessary listing. To link it with the filtering map and the map sync widget, enable the use custom query option and assign the CSS ID using the same value we set earlier when adding it as an additional provider in the map sync widget. You can do any additional styling here if needed. Then let's move on and add a dynamic calendar widget next to the map. 
To set it up, first choose the listing created for the calendar view. Then choose to group post by date from a custom field and enter the name of the post meta field which contains the event date. Other required settings are connecting the GeoSearch query and assigning the CSS ID that was reserved for the calendar in the map sync. Now we can do some final styling, then hit the publish button and check out the page on the front end. So initially the map is centered to display all post markers. When we hover over a marker we see post info based on the pre-built map listing. At the same time the listing grid and dynamic calendar show all posts in their own layouts. Each time we interact with the map by zooming or panning, the data in all three listings updates automatically showing only the posts whose addresses fall within the current map view. This allows us to explore the map visually while also discovering detailed post information below and seeing a calendar of events we've focused on. Beside using different listing types, you can create synced listings using different GeoSearch custom queries. For example, you might display two listing grids, one showing only free events and the other paid, or one sorted by rating and the other by price, making your page a dynamic tool for comparing and segmenting content. So really, thinking listings with the map view unlocks a whole new level of interactive content browsing and filtering. It's surprisingly easy to set up and opens the possibilities to unique user experiences. That's all for now. Post your questions below, support us with a like and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials. Ciao!